Hey, I got your text. How may I be of Sivus? Dude, what the fuck? Is this because I said the dialogue at the back of the funeral should be a walk and talk away from the church, intercut with the funeral? No, 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 that's totally genius. I'm absolutely using it. It changes their entire intent and completely sets the arc up so much better. So. Right? No, no. This is because, because Emma just called and said that you invoiced us. What? This is incredibly uncool, Daniel, okay? This is, this is the kind of shit that you do that, like, if I were not your sister, I would legit never take your call again. How many other people do punch up for you without contracts? What? Nothing. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Do you not want to do punch up? I mean, you can say you don't want to help me. That's fine. I mean, do, do you understand the kind of fucking penalties that I have to pay now for using a non-union writer to do punch up? No, I do not know. I do not know. Do you have any idea how bad this would be if, if, if it were any other producer on earth that you did this to? No other producer on earth has me doing punch up on their television series. Okay, but seriously, like the guys that you, that you write for, I mean, you used to submit to like Leno and everybody, right? Like freelance or whatever, you used to do that? Yeah, I did, and it did not get me into the guild, and they never yelled at me about penalties. Right, but I'm, what I'm saying is that when you were doing that, it's not like you would just send an invoice to, I don't know, the fucking Tonight Show, right? For, for, without an agreement in place? No, I, I would send in 50 jokes a day, and they just sent me checks for the stuff they used. Wait, really? Seriously? That's how you... What did they, they, they like, send an itemized list of the jokes they picked? And, and uh, I don't... What? No, they would send a check. I still have the first one. I have the stub from the first one. But no list. There was no itemized anything. You had to watch the show to see which ones they used. It was kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, you... You get, right, that that is, like, not an okay way to do business. Yeah? I think it was something Jimmy Brogan set up as executive producer to make sure all the comics who needed it could get a little cash and a great credit. I don't, I don't know who that is. One of the three kindest men in comedy. I think there were only a few of us who really did the 50 jokes a day thing, but if you sold a couple, you could stay afloat. I'm sorry you have to pay penalties. I was trying to work with you like a professional. As a professional. As a professional. <clears throat> well, you know what, Daniel? It comes off as really, really, like, not professional i'm sorry so you don't have to pay it if you don't want to it's fine what or you know if you want to do it like leno just pay me for the stuff you use no no, no. this is my point daniel okay i can't do that because <laughs> then it gets even more complicated than just paying the stupid fucking penalties sorry Look, i don't know what else i'm supposed to say Linz. i'm sorry i thought i was doing it right just forget about it i i I can't forget about it because you put invoices into my system, into the accounting system. And so now it's a whole thing and we have to fill out these invoices or we have to do an official dispute. What? I mean, I just, I don't understand. If you needed money, you just could have asked me. I mean, I could have lent you the 58,000 or whatever. What? <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just please, please don't do it again, okay? Okay. I'm just, I'm feeling really weird about money right now. And we just, we keep pushing back the date that we're going back into production, which freaks me the fuck out. And even just something as small as, you know, unexpected punch up invoices that has to come out of, of, of somewhere in my budget, right? Somewhere else. I mean, unless I want it to come straight out of my own pocket. which <laughs> I, I, I really don't know how all of that works. I'm so Okay. See, so now you sound like dad. So. He once claimed he had no mannerisms until I was born, and then he started adopting mine. See, you were adopted. <laughs> please, oh please, let me not be related to any of them. <laughs> I have a question. I have an answer. The fifth chapter of any John Irving novel. No, I don't have it. What was my question, if that's the case? Um, what do bears and wrestling have in common? Right. Thank you. Also, there's a thing. There's a thing? There's a thing. Okay. Um, all right. Today, while I was hanging out at the protest, I, I was lending the weight of my presence, which is sort of 
watching in a Raskolnikov hate. <laughs> it's it's how I it's how I deal with the world when I have to actually be among people. So I I got my thoughts organized on the next two episodes you sent me. Do you even want me to do that? Well, are you going to send me a fucking invoice? I don't have to. Because I I just I don't want to be taking too much of your Raskolnikov time. Okay. I just I. You know, I always want your thoughts, right? I mean, I, I want your thoughts about random life shit. Of course, I want your thoughts about, about writing. You are the best writer. I know. I tell you frequently, and I mean it. And yet, I am a writer you won't hire. <laughs> Seriously, you want to get into the entertainment industry on nepotism? I don't know. It seems to be working okay for Jed Whedon. Right, but you're Daniel Grunman. Why would you, you want to be Jed Whedon? You know what? I really wouldn't mind being Jed Whedon. Do you, do you want to come work on the show? I mean, I, if, if, you, if you wanted to write for my show, Daniel, why didn't you just ask? I think I did. Allowed? I might have been screaming it inside my heart. I think you might have been screaming it inside your heart. Shit. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm nowhere near staffing because they keep pushing the, the date of when we're going back. If we're going back at this point, I don't fucking believe we're yeah, going back. That. Anyway, um, but I seriously, we can circle back around to this when it's time. If, if you're, if you really want to work for the show full time. Also, um, <clears throat> your agent pitched you to me as a potential <laughs> series regular. She did? Yeah. Yeah. Once she realized we were related, you know, after like seven minutes, um, she actually pitched you to uh, to act in the show, you know, like a quirky regular or a recurring, you know, like um, fucking, what's it, Belser on SVU. I, I could do that. Arnie said that? Well, not in so many words, um, but it's, it's shockingly not a bad idea. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you'd like to, to be in it, uh, if you're still in trouble, you know, when, when, Everything goes back to normal. There's no such thing as normal. Yeah, there's no such thing as normal. Can I use that? Sure. No charge. Oh, fuck off. Too soon. <laughs> wow. But seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know that, that at least you'll be good for the next few, probably several months, at least. What are you talking about? Well, you're going to be getting that check in like, I don't know, 30 days. Wait. Lindsay, why did you think I needed to borrow $58,000? Well, I'm just, I was just kind of estimating my brain. I mean, you know, guessing what the invoicing rate would be for a guild scale punch up I'm times all guild. those scripts. I, I, I'm not in the guild, Lindsay. Well, I know that's why we have the fucking penalties. I invoiced at my regular hourly rate. What? I invoiced for $750 for five hours of work. Oh. Oh, I, I just knew that you had invoiced us and- I didn't even charge you for the reading time. I was just, I was figuring, Scale plus 10. Jeez. Well, no wonder you were pissed. No, even if it were that, that's not why I was pissed. I, uh, it's a guy that I'm not going to have to talk to at the network. He has one of those pro cop blue line flags behind him every time we zoom, and it makes Crack. me want to fucking kill somebody. Yes. Crack. So, mea culpa, I was already 
looking for a fight when I started this call. And then Emma asked if we should process the invoice from you. And I We're just- We're all on edge. It's perpetual fight or flight mode for everyone. Wait a minute, I can just call this consulting. What? The, the, the $750 invoice, I mean, please, I can just call that consulting. And so that I don't have to pay any guilt penalties. Fantastic. I'm yes. so relieved. Lynn, thank you. I don't know why I'm so fucked up about money. Really? Seriously, you don't? <laughs> Mom and dad are both insane about money. Well, okay, so dad pretends it doesn't exist. And mom, although she's kind of more of like a cash hoarder a little bit now. I mean, she, when we were little, it was like we were either completely broke or we were flush and she would buy a ton of weird shit. There was either like not enough at all or there was so much she had to trade it immediately for uh, like fondue pots. Or, or macrame plant hangers. Oh Christ, you remember the summer of macrame? <laughs> Jesus God. Um, yeah, that was summer. I think that was the summer that dad got the advance on that completely unreadable book. Um, Which one? A hermeneutic exploration of creative intuition. <laughs> no, 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 the, the one, the, oh God, the economic um, in interpretation one. Oh, right, of course. I forgot about that one while I was reading it. <laughs> Dad, Dad <sighs> screamed at me once for counting my savings. Okay, that's a, that's a weird sentence. Yeah, it is. It was like a year, maybe a year before you were born, I think. Mom wasn't showing you. It was the second Saturday of a month. Uh, so I knew the new DC comics were coming in down at Creighton's newsroom at around two. I had a bunch of change, right? I, I was stacking the quarters and the dimes and the nickels into different piles. It was right at that transition. There was, you won't remember this, a transition between uh, the 20 cent comic books and then they were putting it up to 25 but they didn't all come in at the same time so i didn't know what was going to be 20 and what was going to be 25 and i was thinking oh if they're all 20 then i can get this many but if that one's a quarter then i'll have to cut down and i'll save maybe such well, money for when marvel comics come in next week and god those are so weird they are so it's <sighs> so weirdly vivid i'm lying on my stomach I'm on the bed, morning sunlight is slanting down in front of me with the, you know, the dust moat sort of drifting down through it. And I'm just playing around with the math and the coins. And dad comes in and he stops and he says, I thought you were reading! As if it's an accusation. <laughs> I know that tone. He once said, you know I love you. In that tone, like yeah. what? You, you know I love you. It's hostility disguised as affection. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Anyway, Shit. he was very upset. He was, it was like, cause I, just because I wasn't reading, I thought. And I said, no, I was counting my money. And he, I want you out of this house, outside. You go engage the world, leap into the impossible gift of the present moment, he said. And I said, why? And he said, because I don't want you turning into a miser. Get outside. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. It was the day I learned the meaning of the word miser. You know that's about him and not you, right? Yeah, I do. But you know, like okay. over the years, as I learned about Jewish stereotypes and the Holocaust, the, you know, I spent eight months in therapy trying to figure out why I picked up a $300 tab at a restaurant dinner to which I had been invited by one of the wealthiest people I know. I only know what you say in your act. What do I say about that in my act? I'm, I'm going to fuck it up. Uh, something like, if we're so stingy, how come you're always talking about how Jesus bought everybody lunch? Oh, yeah. Fish is and loaves for everyone. That's not a miracle. <laughs> That's catering. <laughs> right. And then it... I, it builds to some climax that I'm also going to get wrong. Um, it's like, sinners, fuckers, come oh, on it's down. A, the Lord Buck, it's a Lord Buckley reference, sort of. Dinners, fornicators, all you fine fuckers, do as you will. I've got this, your bar tab is covered. That's the one, yeah. Sin, transgressions, <laughs> put away your wallets. Your money's no good here. I got this. <laughs> um, so which one would be better? 
No, I can't find it. What are we discussing? Do you want me to start figuring out how to get you on the staff or in the cast of my show? Are you, are you serious? Daniel, just tell me what you want. It's, it's, it's actually pretty easy to do this kind of thing. You just, I mean, I run the fucking show. I so. know that. Mom keeps telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, um, so what do you want? I don't, I don't know. Liz, I don't feel right about asking. Yes, that is, that is woefully apparent, Daniel. So I'm going to make it easier for you. Don't ask me. Tell me what you want. Peace on earth. True equity for all people. Great. I would like, please, to have a COVID vaccine and a justice system that actually functions as a system for justice. But in the meantime, Daniel, do you want to write for or be in my show? Which pays better? Is that all you people think about? Oh, not even from you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Can we come back to this when you know what's <laughs> happening with production? <laughs> yeah, we can. I'm just letting you know it's not the best idea. Even when it comes from me, Daniel, an offer like this, you, you have to move pretty fast. In Hollywood, yes plus time equals no. Beth Lapita says that in Hollywood, no is a function of yes over time. That seems like too much machinery. She's terrific. She doesn't always adhere to brevity as the best route to fit. She's um, on Cabaret, yeah? Yeah. First place I ever saw Justin Sayer. I love him. Right? right? Full yeah. beard, maud blouse, and fuck me pumps. Hilarious. Rambling stories. He's, he's the Brett Summers of our generation. Wow. I mean, good pull, but once we're trading talent recommendations, it means that I can be using my time better. So I am not dying. Are you dying? As far as I know. Cool. Oh, um, mom says I should tell you to ask her for the story about the neighbor's dog. Is it a good story? No. Should I ask her? It depends on how much you want to avoid talking and just let her ramble. Okay, good. You know what? Go ahead and um, invoice me for those other scripts as you do them for the punch up. I mean, Jesus, God, that rate is <laughs> a bargain. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. That is incredibly helpful right now. Hey, it's no problem. And um, the stuff that you sent so far is absolutely fantastic I'm, I'm using so much of it it's a huge help thank great. you great i love to hear that okay talk tomorrow go away go away why was i just british <laughs> <laughs>